Hey folks, this is Game Kick, and welcome back to Parkitect. So this is part five of our Let's Build series, and I'm continuing um, the same park as I've been working on for the past couple of episodes. Um, and it's actually starting to shape up pretty nicely. I'm over here in our little desert area. Um, I've just added another ride, and I'm gonna also, uh, once I'm done theming that, I'm going to add a few more decorations just to make it feel uh, a little bit more exciting and visually pleasing, I guess. So I placed that down that, um, that big slide ride to kind of match the swinging ship next to it. And then, as I mentioned before, it, I sort of feel like, um, like a section of a theme park feels a little bit empty without a fence holding it in. Um, you know, you're, if you go to any theme park, you're not going to be able to just wander off, you know, in any direction. So a fence really helps make it feel like, um, you know, it's like it's really its own dedicated section. So I put in that fence and then along this main path here, I'm putting down some benches because I noticed that everyone over in this section of the park was walking around hunched over like they needed to, um, to take a rest. And that's another thing that just makes any part of your park feel a little bit more complete um, is just you know things like benches trash cans um, things that you'll actually see uh, out in, a, in an amusement park so I also decided that I'm gonna want to put down some rocks uh, that's gonna be sort of the um, like the main type of scenery over here so a couple over towards um, the entrance to this area of the park and then a bunch in front of each ride to kind of fill in those those just bare gaps that are out in the front um, and I'm also placing just a little sort of like a plaza where um, people can come and sit underneath the rides you know if if mom wants to uh, go watch little Jimmy on the swinging ship over there and I'm pretty pleased with that it looks looks nice um, and somewhat realistic uh, and then I decide I'm going to I need to um, I guess to do like a little hedge divider in between these two rides just to make it look, you know, less like there's empty space in between there. Um, and at first I was like, maybe these trees are kind of weird because obviously in, in real life there are no trees that are that brown that aren't, you know, dead. But this game really isn't that realistic anyway. Uh, it's kind of got its own, you know, own aesthetic that isn't supposed to be super representative of, of real life so I just kind of go with it because it looks nice um, in this section over here and then I'm putting down some more rocks in front of this other uh, the, uh, in front of the haunted house over here and I thought these big hulking boulders would look I guess pretty appropriate um, in front of that water castle thing that I built um, the haunted house on so um, I'm adding a bunch of other rocks that are sort of clipping through each other to give it some texture which um, just makes it look really nice uh, and then just some additional shrub type things along the back there so that um, it gives a little bit of a visual border to this section of the park without uh, I guess you know beyond beyond what that fence provides so it just kind of makes you makes people aware oh this isn't a place to walk this is just sort of um, behind the path here and that's it for my decorations for that part of the park for today. Um, and I decided that I wanted to build another coaster because the only one that I have is that um, slightly lame wooden coaster out by the front. And I was looking through the list of coaster types, deciding what to build, and I decided maybe instead of an act like a, a real roller coaster, I will just do a fun log flume uh, over in the foresty area so I am extending that quite a bit uh, just to give myself some room to build the log flume on and um, I decide since I didn't do any of this with the wooden coaster out by the front I would give this some terrain um, to go through and, and around and underneath and stuff especially with a log flume it just sort of makes sense um, to have your tracks going you know around some mountains and, and into them and around and so I decide I'm going to extend this river a little bit uh, through a couple of those 
mountainy um, things that I just built, and I'm just re, re that water back in there. And I'm thinking about where to put the line and where to put the station, and I decide that the line will go across the river, kind of like that other line right there, so I give it a little um, mini island to for it to go across, and then the, I decided that this mountain, all sort of along that, what will be along that main path, is going to be the best place for the station because I can have that queue line wrap up and around and go up the hill, um, and and then people can sort of see the station from the path down there, which um, I think will be pretty nice. And so I'm kicking off the ride with a drop, um, but it takes me a little while to figure out exactly how I want to do this and how I want to have the ride go into the mountain. Um, so I, I was trying to do a couple of different placements here, but I was finding that without more of a drop than just that initial part, the log just goes kind of um, at, a, at a pretty boringly slow pace. So I'm gonna fin I'm gonna do a little bit more up on the mountain here, but then I have to go back and as I see the logs doing their you know, they're kind of ghost test runs down at the beginning. Uh, I can just tell it's going to be so, so boring. So um, I am building a nice big incline up there towards the back of the ride so that um, drop right there is going to be the sort of the main big drop of this ride and go through the mountain and then come out right by the water, which is kind of cool. Um, I feel like Maybe I've been on a log flume ride that has done that before. You kind of are, you know, you're obviously in your track that has all the water in it and with the, you know, that the log glides through, but um, it gives it a pretty cool feel when the track itself is also pretty close to water. So uh, I kind of run with that and I go back down underneath the water in the middle of the river, which I think is, is even cooler um, and gives you sort of a... Not, it's not scary. I wouldn't say it's scarier, but it just, um, I don't know, makes you feel more immersed in, in the ride, maybe. So, um, going down under the river and then back up on the other side and curving around, um, trying to match the both the height and the alignment um, to get it back on, on track for the station. And then, yeah, so I, I match it up nicely and um, then just figure out where to put the entrance and exit and I'm realizing the way that I've built this the, the main the way if I extended that main path that's three squares wide um, up further it would it would hit that um, the side of that hill that I've built so instead of making the path look a little strange by going around that man-made hill I'm just gonna have it end here so when I decide that, I know that I'm going to have the exit just kind of drop right down onto the path, and then the queue line is going to go underneath the, those stairs. Um, and so the, the ride will essentially be at the end of this path. Um, and right now I'm just, this is when I go back and just tweak that beginning because it's, oh, it's just so boring. So um, I go down underneath the ground so that I can get kind of a bigger drop, and then I, I have to... I have to redo a bunch of the um, a bunch of the track pieces over here just to, to get it all to fit in. And as I have been building more rides, um, both in this series and um, just on my own, and using this building tool more, I I do really like it. Um, the the track builder it's it it takes a little bit of getting used to, mostly because. Um, it feels a little antiquated and old school, I guess. Um, you know, basically because it's essentially exactly the same tool as what's in the early Roller Coaster Tycoon games, which makes it feel familiar, but also kind of, um, yeah, outdated, I guess. But building piece by piece when you're when you're doing these more complicated um, segments and loops and stuff like this. It's actually pretty easy to use and pretty straightforward to get the results that you want. Um, the only problem that I have, because I think I'm partially dyslexic, is that when, I, when I'm doing a curve like that, I'm, it always takes me a second to figure out if I'm 
doing the curve the right way or not, depending on what my camera angle's at. Um, but anyway, that's pro probably just um, me being special. So yeah, I like it a lot. It's the only thing that I don't like is that um, there's no auto complete button. So in a situation like this, where I really am just trying to get these dang pieces to connect together, I just want to be able to push a button and tell it to finish the track. And what ended up happening here, um, which we'll go over and see in a second, is that that piece that I just built that I was trying to connect to those, um, that big ramp together, it, it didn't actually connect. It um, created a little invisible gap. So all the, <laughs> the logs just start falling through like that. Um, but you know that should be connected there and it shouldn't be that hard but um, yeah I just have to go through and and redo it basically just just because it it wasn't indicating to me well enough that um, it wasn't connecting so this connection right there it does actually work uh, <laughs> fortunately so um, got it got the the ride all all set up how I want it and then up next is just decorating it um, you can see this place this area is pretty barren at the moment and I especially want to hide that silly looking tunnel that you can sort of see um, clipping into the to the mountain there so I'm gonna put a bunch of rocks and trees um, around those two entrances just to make it feel like you are heading right into the mountain took a bunch of different rocks and pieces and rotating and stuff um, but and I'm, I'm gonna speed it up just a little here, just because uh, it's a little bit repetitive. But I was pretty pretty happy with the way that the um, this little corner of the mountain turned out. It looks somewhat like you might expect um, a real log flume to look. So I was I was pretty happy about that. Um, so I'm just yeah, you can see I'm just picking different rocks, rotating them, turning them around, just to make it um, look like there's a bunch of, bunch of different textures, even though there's really only a certain number of, of rock pieces. And then um, for last piece here today, I'm just gonna build this queue line, which like I mentioned, I wanted to snake underneath the stairs there um, across the river and then up and around that piece of hill. Um, I think it looks pretty nice and I was ima I'm imagining, you know, standing in line and being able to look, look back out over that whole little section of the park, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way this, this ride turned out. So I am going to leave it there for today, but thanks for watching as usual. Um, if you like this video, give me a quick thumbs up. And if you want to make sure you catch the next one, just uh, make sure you subscribe. Thanks. Catch you next time.